Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to do an example where we're trying to find the electric field inside a charged spherical insulator. Notice that we have a charge distribution indicated by the charge density per cubic meter. In this case, 20 microcoulombs per cubic meter. And we're trying to find the electric field strength halfway between the center and the edge of the sphere. So the radius, the Gaussian radius, I can go R sub G, is equal to 10 centimeters. The radius of the sphere itself is equal to 20 centimeters. In the next video, we're going to do the same problem, but instead of having the charge expressed in terms of the charge density, we're going to give you the total charge and then find the electric field inside based upon that. The methods are a little bit different, so we'll show you an example of each. So in this case, again, what you're going to do is draw a Gaussian surface, and you realize that's going to be a sphere with radius 10 centimeters, engulfing just a portion of the charge on the sphere. And the equation that we're going to use is that E times A, the electric field strength, times the area, the surface area of the Gaussian surface, is equal to the charge inside that Gaussian surface, divided by epsilon sub naught. So therefore, E is equal to the charge inside, divided by the surface area of the Gaussian surface times epsilon sub naught, which can be written as Q inside, divided by 4 pi times the radius of the Gaussian surface squared. This is the surface area of a sphere times epsilon sub naught. The key, though, is to figure out how much charge is contained within that region right there. So we can say that Q inside is equal to the charge density times the volume of that Gaussian surface. So to find the total charge within the Gaussian surface, you multiply the density times the volume. And so in this case, that's going to be equal to the density times 4 thirds pi rg cubed. So this is, the, of course, the equation for the volume of the sphere using the radius of the Gaussian surface. And that goes into the equation. So the electric field strength is equal to the density times 4 thirds pi, that's going to be r sub g cubed, divided by 4 pi r sub g squared times epsilon sub naught, which is the permittivity of free space. We can simplify by canceling out the 4s, the pi's, and here we have an r cubed and an r squared, so this cancels with two of those. That leaves us in the numerator with the density times the radius of the Gaussian surface, and in the denominator we get the 3 and we get the epsilon sub naught. So now we're ready to plug in some numbers to see what we end up with. So the strength of the electric field at that location, halfway between the center and the edge of the sphere, is equal to the density, which is 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per cubic meter. Multiply times the radius of the Gaussian surface converted to meters, 10 centimeters is 0 0.1 meter. And then we divide that by 3 and by epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. That would be Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared, which leaves us with terms in terms of Newtons per meter. Now we need a calculator. So we have 20 e to the 6 minus times 0.1 divided by 3 and divided by 8.85 e to the 12 minus, so that ends up with, uh, let's see here, 7.5 times 10 to the fourth Newton. So 7.5, that would be about 75,000 Newtons per Coulomb as the electric field strength at the halfway point between the center and the edge of that sphere. And that's how that's done using this kind of information the, ch the charge density per cubic meter, or as we call it, the charge per unit volume, was given in this particular example, and that's how we work it.